Well, hey friends, Roger here, and uh, welcome to my channel, Roger's Reads. So today, you know, I wasn't going to do an April TBR, but given that it's already April and that I've already read some of the books on my list, I decided to call this What I'm Reading in April. So uh, here we are. I think I have about 12 books that I'm going to talk about. Um, so these are all the books that I hope to read this month, and a couple of them I've already read. So the first book is entitled The Boys Who Were Pink. This is by Reverend Baddington III. And this is an interesting little book. It is a high school reunion. Well, one actually one of the members of a group of friends is having an art exhibit or art opening. So another one of his friends is throwing a huge party party for them, which has turned out to be sort of a, a reunion of all of their friends, of uh, friends of their friends, and uh, siblings of their friends. So what we end up with are 24 different stories, and as we learn through each person's story that every person at this party shares a tragic past. Like one big event happened which binds everybody together. So it is really interesting to see how everybody fits together in this larger narrative. So throughout the course of the evening, uh, we get people fighting, arguing, reconnecting, uh, <laughs> shaking, falling in love, um, getting high, etc., etc. So a lot of stuff goes on in this one evening. And, uh, and this is actually one of the books that I haven't finished yet. I'm about a little better than halfway through, I think, and I'm really enjoying it thus far. So the next, second book on my list is entitled Once a Girl, Always a Boy. And this is by Joe Evester. And this is actually a nonfiction story, a, a, a biography actually, written by the mother of a transgender man named Jeremy uh, Ivester. So Jeremy was born a girl and then transitioned, I do believe, in his 20s. So the story is told from both his and his mother's point of view. And I just started it, and so far, it's, uh, it's, I'm really, really enjoying it. So I guess we follow Jeremy through high school as he's uh, starting to discover that all is not right in how he uh, perceives himself. So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Next up is The Two Lives of Lydia Bird by Josie Silver. And uh, this is a book I actually read already. She had just finished it this morning, actually. And this follows a young woman named Lydia Bird who's been with her boyfriend, uh, Freddie, for the past 10 years. Or not, even, not really boyfriend, fiance, actually, because they're getting married in a couple of months. But on his way to meet Lydia at a restaurant for her birthday dinner, Freddie dies in a car crash. So naturally, she is just overwhelmed by grief. But then she's found a way to be with Freddie in kind of a parallel universe, I guess, a universe in which the accident never happened and the wedding is on schedule. So then she gets to spend time with Freddie once again. So what she ends up doing here is going back and forth between these two lives and uh, doing so eventually takes a toll on her and she knows that at some point she's going to have to choose. And uh, this was a really, really good book. And I'm not going to talk about any more of it now because again, this is a TBR kind of, not a wrap-up. So I'll talk about this in my wrap-up. I'm going to try to do a mid-month April wrap-up, so I'll talk about it then. But uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. This is actually a selection, uh, last month's selection of the Book of the Month Club. And if you've been following me, I promised myself that this year I'm going to try to read my books as they come in so they don't end up being on my shelves. So next up, speaking of being on your shelves, is The Red Scrolls of Magic, written by Cassandra Clare and Wesley Chu. So this was one of my most anticipated books of 2019. I actually pre-ordered it so I would get it right when it came out. It came out and ended up on my shelf until now. And of course, the problem here is I never put it on my TBR. So if it's not on my TBR, I'm not gonna read it. So I added it to this month's TBR, and then, uh, this is another book that I just finished and that I really enjoyed. So as I mentioned, I was really excited to read this because I'm a big fan of the characters Magnus Bane and Alec Lightwood from uh, Cassandra Clare's uh, Shadowhunters uh, world. So this takes place after the events of the last Shadowhunters book. So Alec and Magnus are on vacation. 
They started to do a little getaway and spend some time alone and get to know each other a little bit better. But once they arrive in Paris, they get the news that there is a demon worshiping cult called the Crimson Hand that is really getting out of hand and causing all sorts of chaos. Now, as it turns out, this was actually a cult that Magnus formed as a joke years ago. So now Magnus and Alec have to travel across Europe to try to put a stop to the cult and <laughs> every step along the way they uh, encounter demons who have been summoned by this cult hell-bent on destroying them. So this was really a fun non-stop adventure ride that I really ended up enjoying and again I'll talk about this more during my wrap-up. So the next book that I hope to read this month is entitled The Boys of Alabama by Genevieve Hudson. This is another e-arc that I received and follows a 16-year-old uh, boy named Max. And this chronicles his first year in America. But as it turns out, Max has some sort of supernatural abilities and supernatural powers. And during the course of that first year, he falls in love with a boy named Pan. And that's pretty much all I know about this story, so I'm looking forward to reading it to see what it's all about. Next up is Cancer Ships Aquarius by Anita Sunday. Now, if you follow my channel for a while, I've, you know I've talked quite a bit about Anita Sunday. She's one of my favorite uh, gay romance authors. Uh, she writes these really slow burn romances that I really enjoy. But one of my favorite series by her is the Signs of Love series, and this book is number five in that series, Cancer Ships Aquarius. So this follows a man named Reed Glover who has been dumped by a significant other, abandoned by his friends, and he's feeling kind of alone in the world at the moment and trying to recover. So he ends up interviewing to become a live-in nanny on a recent widow's yacht. And the job is to look after his 13-year-old daughter, Joanna. But Joanna is kind of masterminding a little plan to get Reed to befriend her dad, to pull her dad out of, her, out of his shell and uh, help him to unleash those emotions that he's been bottling up. So we have a living nanny, a recently widowed a single dad, and a scheming daughter. So uh, we can kind of figure out what's going to happen here. So I cannot wait to delve into this one. As I mentioned, I read all, I've read quite a few of her books and uh, none of them disappoint. So next up is another gay romance book called Rocket Science by K.M. Newhall. And uh, this is the first book in a new series called the Love Logic series. But uh, this book is supposedly is a standalone, so it can stand alone. You don't need to have read the other books in the series. So this follows a young man named Elijah who's had a crush on his brother's best friend, Pax, for as long as he can remember. So now Elijah's at the point of his life where he's on the verge of obtaining his PhD and then enters Pax again into his life and supposedly feelings are developing between the two of them and that's a, again that's all I know about this so I'm kind of looking forward to going into this blind. Oh and I forgot to hold up the books as I was talking about them. So this is the uh, Cassandra Clara book, the uh, Red Scrolls of Magic, and this is the Two Lives of Lydia Bird. And that was by uh, Josie Silver. So the next book that I plan on reading during the month of April this month is entitled Dear Edward, and this is written by Anne Napolitano. So this follows a 12-year-old Edward who boards a plane with his uh, brother and his parents along with 183 other passengers and they board a flight for uh, headed to Los Angeles. So the plane crashes and everyone except for Edward is killed. So this book supposedly follows Edward as he tries to piece his life together after this horrible tragedy and you know that's pretty much all I know about this book but it has been really well received. And this is actually one of the uh, Book of the Month Club selections in March. It's funny, I told myself I was going to read all light-hearted books this month, you know, because of things, you know, everything going on in the world right now, and, uh, and one must try to keep one's spirits up, so I'm not sure how this slipped into my TBR. I get you know, I told, I promised myself that I would read the books as they came in, so, um, yeah, it should be 
I'm guessing a heart-wrenching read, but uh, but yeah, I hope I enjoy it. So what's next? The next book is The Hitman's Guide to Making Friends and Finding Love by Alice Winters. So this follows a hitman and a PI who end up working together to take down a horrible criminal. And I believe the story's, story's kind of starts out as a cat and mouse game between this PI and this hitman. And of course, they end up falling for each other, which is kind of problematic since they're both supposed to be bitter enemies. So this plot sounded really intriguing to me, so that's uh, why I got it, and I really don't know too much more about it. So it sounds kind of fun, so I will be reporting back. The next book that I plan on reading this month is entitled Don't Fear the Not Really Grim Reaper, written by Carol Cummins. So this follows a college student named Emery Sutton, who wakes up in the morgue, and it takes him a few moments to remember that he has magical abilities. So supposedly, he encountered a really attractive man with wings moments before the bus ran him over. So this man with wings is supposedly Junior Reaper John, who's been summoned before his supervisor to explain how his first solo assignment went so horribly wrong. So all the uh, new Reaper knows is that he ran into Emery by accident, so Emery wasn't supposed to be killed, was able to see John when nobody was supposed to be able to see John, and all of a sudden a bus came out of nowhere and ran the young man down. So there's supposedly demons and angels and all sorts of hijinks in this story and it sounded like a lot of fun. So um, yeah, I cannot, cannot wait to read that. So next up, you know, I just realized that I chose two sick Cassandra Clare books for this month, but I'm trying to work through my backlist at the same time. So the next book I'm going to be reading is Clockwork Angel. And this is the first book in the Infernal Devices series. I actually chose this because I want to read her new series, uh, the first book being Chain of Gold. And from what I understand, it's best to have read the Infernal Devices series first. So I read all the Shadowhunters books, but I haven't uh, yet dug into the Infernal Devices. So I'm going to read this so I can get her new series, Chain of Gold, which I've heard some pretty good things about. And I don't really know too much at all about this, except that it, again, takes place in the Shadowhunter world, and I believe it takes place in the uh, late 1800s in, in the underbellies of London. So it should be fun. And I, th and I did read the... What did I read? Bane, the Bane Chronicles. And I believe that some of the characters in there are also in this series, although I may be wrong. We'll find out. And the next book that I'm going to be reading is Hemingway's Notebook by Jackie North. So this is a time travel story, and those of you who follow my channel know that I love uh, time travel and parallel universes and those kind of themes in my books. So this follows a young man named Jake who is taking photographs in the room where Ernest Hemingway once stayed, and Jake is flung back in time to 1932 during the Great Depression, during which he meets a young man named Sebi who is living on the edge, he's a half-starving uh, victim of the Great Depression. And somebody realizes right away after meeting Jake that something is wrong with him. He's wearing strange clothes, using strange words, and uh, also appears to be the most handsome man Sebi has ever seen. So supposedly the two begin falling in love. And I assume that at some point Jake is going to have to decide whether to stay in the past or return to his own time where he belongs. So we'll see how that goes. So those are the books that I plan on reading this month. So I hope to have a little bit better reading month than I did this month than I did in, uh, in March. So I ended up reading eight books in March, which, which isn't too, too bad. But I typically read about 10 or 12. So um, so I hope to do better. And uh, thus far, I'm off to a pretty good start. So how about you? What are you reading this month? Let me know in the uh, comments. And I think that about does it. If you like this video, please click the like button below as it really helps my channel out. As always, I thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all of your support. And I will talk to you all in the next video. Roger and out. Ooh.